If you're familiar with my output, then you know that I think that there was a puddle of blood in Dealey Plaza. Just one. The one seen by Jerry Coley, not the one seen by Malcolm Couch. That that puddle of blood was behind the black dogman wall. That it can actually be seen in a film taken just after the assassination behind the black dogman wall. And that that puddle of blood is there because that's where J.D. Tippett was actually shot. J.D. Tippett was a co-conspirator of Oswald's in the shooting of the president. And it's kind of complicated, but there was another conspiracy involving the, uh, the CIA, the Secret Service, the Dallas police, and um, I forget who else at the moment. And also um, that Oswald and Tippett, being part of their pro-Castro conspiracy, were under the control of this inside crew conspiracy. And that Tippett was shot at the puddle of blood and then was taken to this station wagon where he was put inside and taken to the trademark. Therefore, I'm saying that Tippett was shot in Dilly Plaza. He was not shot on 10th Street, and the purpose of pretending for him that he was shot on 10th Street was to make the assassination into a lone nut story. If Tippett is shot in Dilly Plaza, then you can't have a lone nut story. You have to have a conspiracy, and that opens a new can of worms. I think they, the conspirators, wanted to keep that can of worms unopened. And so they wanted it to be a lone nut job. And so they uh, pretended to shoot Tippett on 10th Street. But that is actually R.C. Nelson, uh, a friend of Tippett's. And that uh, he wasn't really shot on 10th Street. So what I'm getting at in this video is that the shooting on 10th Street was fake. And that therefore the police officer, R.C. Nelson, who was a uh, fake shot, on 10th Street was not actually bleeding, did not have blood coming out of him, and did not leave his blood on the street. I think that all of the 10th Street witnesses are compromised, but it's still instructive to see what they say. And in this case here, it's uh, T.F. Bowley in 1963 in his affidavit. He said, when I got there, the first thing I did was try to help the officer. He appeared beyond help to me. A man was trying to use the radio in the squad scar, but stated he did not know how to operate it. I knew how and took the radio from him. I said, hello, operator. A police officer has been shot here. But in 1978, Bowley told the HSCA something different. He said, Bowley stated that he saw no blood and did not know that the man had been shot at the time. So in 1963, he's on the radio saying the officer was shot. In 1978, he's saying that he didn't know the officer had been shot. Normally, the earlier statement should be considered more reliable, I think, all else being equal. But being that Bully is a compromised witness, I think what's going on here is that he forgot what lies he was supposed to tell by 1978, and that he says the truth here that he did not know that the officer had been shot because he saw no blood. I think that's the truth, and that there was no blood because R.C. Nelson was this officer, and he wasn't really shot. I think Helen Markham and Domingo Benavides are also compromised witnesses. They both said they saw blood, but their descriptions of that blood are very different. These are both to the Warren Commission. Helen Markham, in response to Gerald Ford saying the blood was, uh, I've taken this out of context somewhat, but they're talking about the fallen officer's blood. And Markham says, yes, just gushes. So Markham is saying the blood was gushing out of the officer. But Domingo Benavidi said, looked like a big clot of blood coming out of his head. A clot of blood is not a gush, it's a, a clot, which would move slowly, and it sounds like it's moving very slowly indeed, the way he says this. We don't get uh, detailed descriptions, but it's characterized very differently. That is, the blood that Helen Markham saw, 
seems to have very different characteristics than the blood that Benavides saw. And I think what this means is that they're both lying. There was no blood, but they were told to lie about that. So they lied in their own ways about what they imagined the blood should look like. And Virginia and Barbara Davis both mention blood. Virginia says in this FBI uh, report, she stated she saw an officer lying on the ground near the police car and observed blood on his face and chest. She doesn't say whether it was gushing or clotted. She just says there was blood on his face and chest. And uh, Barbara, according to an FBI report, says she observed a uniformed police officer lying on the ground by the police car bleeding. So both of them mentioned blood, though they're not very specific about the nature of the blood, except to say one of them said it was on the face and chest, which of course is where the wounds were. And Negro porter Sam Gwynyard said that when he got there, the police officer was bloody and looked dead to me. And these are the witnesses who described the blood in any way while the officer was still there. Notice none of them describe any kind of a puddle of blood on the ground. They're just talking about the blood they see on the officer. Now the implication, if the blood was gushing or if he's bleeding, the implication might be that there would be a puddle. But nobody specifically talks about a puddle. And we also have photography taken by the Dallas police and used by the Warren Commission as exhibits to show to witnesses, which apparently show a puddle of blood near the front of Tippett's car. And this photograph and another were shown to uh, William Scoggins, the cab driver. And uh, this is his t some of his testimony. I've edited it here uh, for brevity but not to change the meaning. There was blood there, of course. They picked the man up by the time I got there. The ambulance did. So when Scoggins sees the blood, the body is no longer there. Mr. Scoggins, handing you what the commission reporter has marked or what has been marked as Commission Exhibit 527, I ask you to state this substance on the street here appears to be anything you had ever seen before. Yes, that appears to be the officer's blood, blood from the officer. Is that located in, approx in, the, in approximate location to this car in the same relative position that you saw the blood when you were there? Or is it any different if you know? I could be mistaken, but I was thinking he was a bit, a little bit closer to the car than that. You thought he was a bit, little bit closer to the car than that? Yes, I thought he was, but I could be mistaken. Well, this is not a definitive statement, of course, but Scoggins is saying that he thinks that puddle of blood ought to be closer to the car because he thought that the officer had fallen closer to the car. Therefore, if there's a puddle of blood that came from the officer, it should be closer to the car, too. Now, this introduces the possibility, and I think the fact, that this puddle of blood or whatever it is on the street did not actually come out of the officer, but had been placed there after the officer had been taken away. That's what I think happened. And we also have a, a first-person account from a report uh, by Robert Barrett, agent of the FBI. He's giving his own account in this report. And in here he says of the puddle of blood, I noted, however, that the blood from the fatally wounded officer was near the left front fender of the squad car, indicating that he had walked around the front of the car. Now, he's making a distinction here uh, between what he believed Helen Markham had said and what he actually witnessed. That's why he says, however. But, uh, and he misunderstood what Markham said. But anyway... The point I'm getting at here is that apparently Barrett saw this puddle and saw it where the picture shows it because he says uh, it indicated that the officer had walked around the front of the car. The implication is that he 
Uh, actually, the implication of what he says is that he went further than this puddle. But the point is that he got past the front of the car, I think. And that's not what the witnesses said. The, the officer was not that far in front of the car by reading the testimony accounts of the witnesses who were there when the body was there. So I think this also implies, not real strongly, but it implies that that puddle is in the wrong place for where the officer was on the ground. Now this photograph I've been showing was taken by Officer Pete Barnes and during his testimony it was shown to him and Mr. Bellin said, handing you Barnes deposition exhibit E, would you state what that is, what this is? This is a shot from the south looking northward at the front of the Tippett car and showing the blood shot on the pavement where Tippett fell. This has a caption on it, spot where patrolman Tippett fell. Does the arrow point to the spot to which you refer? It does. So Pete Barnes, who took the photo, identifies that as the spot of blood that was there after he got there when the body had been removed already. And we also have copies of this photo, which came from the Dallas City Archives and can be found on the Portal to Texas History website. And there are two copies of this photo there. And we also have uh, scans of the backs of the photos. And on the back of the photo, on the top one there, it says, View looking north, dark spot is blood, but blood is crossed out where Tippett fell. So for reasons unexplained, somebody crossed out blood and just calls it a dark spot. And the one underneath that, once again, is written dark spot without blood being crossed out. So it looks as though somebody has edited the information here to make it not specified as a spot of blood, but merely a dark spot. And why would anyone do that? And we have the same thing for the other photo that was used. On the back of that photo, of those two photos that came from the Dallas City Archives, the one on the bottom there also has blood crossed out, and the one on the top just has dark spots. So the same exact thing was done to this. Apparently it was originally identified as a spot of blood, and it was changed to be a dark spot only and not specifying blood. So I think the implication here, although it doesn't prove it, the implication is that somebody knows that's not really blood, and for some reason he wanted to make it right, at least on the backs of the photos. And this is another Dallas police photo, which I find very interesting, uh, with the, uh, in the thick red circle there is the puddle of blood or whatever it might be and you can see trailing off from that prints made by a tire tread that had driven through the puddle of blood and driven off towards where the camera is here leaving a print of the puddle with every rotation of the tire so this means somebody drove through this puddle I don't know if that is relevant to whether or not it's actually Tippett's blood, but it seems kind of uh, disrespectful at least, and perhaps uh, bad evidence practice to allow a car to drive through a puddle of Tippett's blood. Perhaps it means I'm not the only one who knows it's not really a puddle of blood, and perhaps whoever let the car do that didn't consider it disrespectful because it wasn't really blood. So the evidence we have of blood on 10th Street is contradictory and uh, therefore I think consistent with my idea that Tippett was actually shot in Dealey Plaza and that R.C. Nelson pretended to be shot on 10th Street and whatever blood that was there was applied by somebody, perhaps by R.C. Nelson, and perhaps by somebody else after he was taken away.